uh, deep programming language. So I have a presentation and uh, I'm going to turn on laser so that I can point. And uh, this presentation is going to be available <clears throat> on on the online. Uh, all you need is a link to this presentation and it's available. Or you can review the presentation in the browser. But you have to be a member on Discord because I'm posting links only on Discord. <clears throat> so this presentation is uh, <clears throat> made from sections and uh, it has five sections. This is section one. And uh, of course, this is an introductory t tutorial. So it's uh, what is Dart, uh, Dart syntax, and basic types. So let's go. This is Dart, uh, Dart uh, logo. And <clears throat> it's a, it's a, tail of a dart. So dart is a multi-paradigm programming language. <clears throat> and what uh, that means? It means that uh, it implements uh, uh, object-oriented and functional programming. So first version is in April 15, 2005 long time ago. So people say that Dart is faster than JavaScript. That's amazing because JavaScript is faster than Python. So that means it's a fast language. <clears throat> so yeah, it's curious language because Dart is not a dynamic language. It's a static programming language, but it feels like a dynamic programming language. And uh, it's uh, available on Android, iOS, Windows, and web browser. That's what is curious about it, because it can be run in a web browser. But how? I think it's compiling uh, and it's making JavaScript, it's not a native uh, running in the web browser. But uh, it's generating native uh, application for Windows, like executable code, and uh, iOS and Android. But I don't see Linux. I'm not sure if it's running on Linux. <clears throat> so let's see the syntax. First of all, it's a freeform language on what it that means. Freeform. Uh, this is a terminology that we use for languages in computer science. It's a curly bracket language. And you can read the rest. I give you a second to read. Because I don't want to read all the text. So Dart is a free-form curly bracket language and means spaces are not uh, are not accounted. Spaces are not relevant. And, uh, <clears throat> that means you can format your code however you want. But there is a format uh, principle. Uh, and there is a um, well-known how it's done. And if you do it wrong, then other programmers may not like it and may tell you that it's not correct. So, first of all, the brackets uh, usually start after the end of the declaration of a statement. So you start with the bracket, then the open bracket, and then on the next row, you put the first statement. 
in the block. And then you, you, when you close the bracket, you close it on this level where you started, not on the bracket level. You don't put bracket here. <clears throat> but uh, this is how it's usually done, and you have to look many examples if you want to do it correctly. So block comments are enclosed in this notation, slash star and star slash, and uh, this is well known from C. Line comments uh, are double, sp double slash, double slash, and uh, you can put the uh, line comments at the end of the line. And uh, every statement is ending with semicolon. This is a religious, <laughs> religious language. So it, it makes you to put semicolon, otherwise it is an error. It doesn't compile. Some people don't like it, but I like it. Let's see next. So I'm not going to read everything, but I'm going to comment about it, right? So, so here we go. Read, read. So let's talk about data types. First of all, Dart is uh, a strongly typed language. Now, what it means, strongly typed, it means that you define a variable with type. And th that's it. You cannot change the type in a, a letter. The variable has the same type all the time. But because it has the same type, if you try to use the variable wrong, then you get a compilation error. That's what strongly typed means. Because in dynamic languages, the type of a variable can be changed. And that's outrageous. I don't like it. So that's why I like this language, because it's strongly typed. And it eliminates possible errors. <coughs> so that is object-oriented, and everything is an object. That's uh, that's to empower uh, some features for Dart that allows Dart to be more flexible for developers to do stuff. Uh, this is almost similar with the dynamic language, but it's not uh, a dynamic behavior. Okay, um, you cannot change the type of the variables, even if the <clears throat> all the variables are objects. So, so because they are objects, all uh, variables are derived from object class or subclass of object. There is an object. You see, there is with capital O. So that means it's a, also a class. So the object is a class. And the... Uh, you don't know yet, probably, what is a class, but if you know other languages, then you know uh, what is a class. But for for now, it's good to know that all all variables are objects, including the literals. Literals are objects. So there are several basic types, numbers, booleans, and strings. These are considered basic types in that. So Dart is using type inference, and uh, Dart can execute implicit data question. What that means? Uh, that's uh, giving you a feeling of flexibility, because you can assign, for example, uh, uh, a constant literal to a variable, and uh, there is an automatic conversion if the type is not really right. But if there is no risk, then there is an automatic conversion. And uh, this is called automatic implicit coercion. But there is also a type inference. And what it means is the type is uh, logically created from your way of declaring the variable. If you give a variable a value, then that's the type. So the compiler is figuring out the type, it's guessing the type. <clears throat> uh, 
So let's see the numbers. There are two kind of numbers in Dart. Only two kind. That's nice because in C++ you have about five types of numbers. More than five types. Uh, so there's, let's see, discrete integer number and continuously double precision numbers. That's it. So there is integer numbers and double precision. Why is differentiation between integer and double precision? Because integer uh, crunch, uh, integer computations are faster than uh, double precision computation. Floating point operations are slower and more expensive. But the uh, integer operations are very fast. So both numbers are 64 bits. The same capacity for either floating precision number or integer number. But integer number has precision 100%. There is no error in any calculation. But double precision, it has an error, a small error. So the computations are not 100% precise but 99.99999999 percent their computations are correct because you know the special division division is not always exact division so it's making a rounding you know double precision number very very large number with very good precision so uh, let's see some examples of uh, variables that are uh, of this type. So the x is going to be of type 10, and the h is going to be type integer. Uh, I'm sorry, type, type integer, right? x is integer, right? Well, why is integer? Because 10, this literal here, is integer. I didn't say anything about x that is integer, but the compiler will figure it out that the 10 is going to be integer. Then <clears throat> uh, h is also going to be integer, but this is a different representation of integer numbers. Using hexadecimal notation, you start with 0x. And then you put some letters, and those letters represent a hexadecimal number. If you don't know uh, com computer theory and uh, software engineering, so it's another class that I'm teaching, and in software engineering class I'm teaching more detailed about the literals and how you represent constant uh, in computer science. <clears throat> but this is not an introductory tutorial for um, computer science. This is uh, Dart specific, so that's why I'm skipping the specifics. So. Um, I'm skipping the details, I mean, the details. So, Y is 1.1, because there is a dot here. This dot represents a, a comma. It represents a decimal. So after the dot, the, you have decimals. This American notation, right? Because in Europe, you, you can use comma. But the third language is using American convention. So, <clears throat> e is going to be 1.25 e uh, power of 3. And this is this is notation for uh, exponential. So, actually, this is 1,250, this number. So, it's a representation, a scientific representation for number. I actually, this is engineering notation, right? <clears throat> so let's see what is coerce coercion again. So coercion, coercion, is coercion. Um, it's depending. Uh, if you're f in France, you say coercion, but if uh, an American, you say coercion, right? Numbers are converted implicit uh, when possible. So. When possible, in this direction from integer to double. Automat. You don't have to do anything. It's automatic coercion. Explicit coercion, you have to do it. So explicit coercion is using a function and can convert from a double to an in integer. So you cut the, the decimals. If you cut the decimal, you have to specify 
it, the language doesn't cut that decimal for you. It's going to give you an error. But if you do the function, then function is not given you an error. This is the way to do. Because it's the software is more readable this way, and you don't have hidden effect. You don't have like a hidden effect of cutting the decimals without you knowing. So it's there is a small risk that you lose some data. And if you lose the data, that's no good, right? That's why that is, you know, precise. And I like it. I like it that it has this safe conversion. <clears throat> Not operators, this is like it's very simple if you know C. But if you don't know C, then I have to explain it. So I assume that you don't know C. So let's see, there is a priority of operators and uh, it's important, the operation, uh, the pr uh, if you don't use parentheses, that uh, priority is important. Otherwise you may make a formula that is by mistake wrong. So first of, first of all, the assign operator, uh, really I, I, I suppose to, to put this later because this uh, doesn't have high priority, but uh, plus plus has high priority, minus minus, uh, it's incremental and decremental. And the uh, integer division, uh, it's this weird notation that they, ha they have an integer division. The result is going to be integer. Um, awkward, I didn't see this in C++, and it's not common. Because tilde usually means not. But uh, in this case, weird. But uh, let's go ahead. The, we have a division, right? Uh, Schles is just a division. And the uh, Schles equal is division with assignment. And the uh, multiplication, this is a update operator, multiplication and assignment. This is a modulo operator. Modulo is an operation It's giving you the reminder the reminder of a division. The reminder is the fractions, fractional. And if the fractional is zero, then the division is precise. If the division, the, the reminder is not, uh, is not uh, zero, then you have a decimal number. It's, the result is going to be a decimal number. So uh, addition, addition is plus, and uh, subtraction is minus. So first of all, uh, the first operation is executed multiplication or division or modulo, and then second, uh, the plus and minus. So uh, the priority is very important. Okay. Boolean type. So now let's see about the Boolean. This is another basic type, and the uh, Boolean. Uh, it's from logic, right? It supports only two values, true and false. And then in some computer languages, you represent true as one and false as zero. You can declare Boolean using var or bool keywords. You have one initialized variable, I have the value null. So <clears throat> null or null, Americans say null. So um, what it means? How? What is null? That's a million dollar question and it's a mistake in computer science that we can have null. And do, there is no such thing in mathematics. Mathematics, all numbers have value zero or other value. It cannot be infinite or null. These are values that can cannot be assigned to a number. But uh, in computer science, some languages are dealing with null and infinity. But what is null? Null is something that is impossible. For example, a variable that is not assigned to anything is considered null. If you don't put a zero inside, it's null. And uh, it's not allocated. There is no memory for null variables. There is no memory. When you, when you give it first value, when you initialize, it's called initialization. 
And when you put something in the variable, then there is a memory allocation. Okay? It's just in type memory allocation with Dart. And why? Because Dart is using objects for everything. So if a number is object, that means it's a means if you see programmer, you know what I'm talking about. It's a reference to a zero address. And zero address is um, protected by the operating system. You cannot read or write in the address zero in any memory. Address zero is reserved for the operating system and it's usually is empty. I don't know if the operating system is using um, the first address in the memory. First one is zero. They represent nothing. So uh, here is an example, and uh, I'm not going to read the example, but you can look at it. So Dart has two ways of declaring variables. One is using the keyword var, and another one is like Java, you use the type hint. Okay, but you don't use both. You don't say var, bool. Uh, you just say var. And this is using type inference, first one, and second one doesn't use type inference. You specify the type. And if you're wrong making the initialization, then it may be an error. This this one, bool b3, doesn't do assignment. It's an incorrect declaration, and it's uh, Dart is going to tell you that it's incorrect. And uh, it's, it's going to be a surprise because b3 is null. And it's not correct because logic supposed to be only true or false. If you have null, then it's an indefinite variable uh, value. So you cannot do operations with null. You do, if you do, you get the result also null. And it uh, doesn't work. It's going to ever, that is going to tell you. That's so. <clears throat> Let's see logical operators. The logical operators are two kind of operators, Boolean and the relational operators. Both of them produce a logical result. And the logical result is Boolean, right? So the Boolean operator not is like in C, beats bang, bang. I don't know how the bang become not, because it's not supposed to be like that. The not symbol is totally different in computer science. It's a, um, it's a L, upside down L. The upside down L is a not. But for some reason, bang become not. Uh, I think C has introduced this convention because it's on the keyboard and the not symbol is not, not on the C. <laughs> the not symbol is not on the keyboard. Sometimes tilde is not. Uh, we're going to see later. This one, uh, and the end, it's also not nice, but uh, it's common in C++. You use two end. And uh, this is an end logic Boolean operator. Uh, bar bar is a Boolean operator or. And this is also arbitrary. Uh, there's no convention in computer in, in mathematics for these operators. They are they're totally different. And they're supposed to add the real symbol uh, but th this is part of computer science, so I'm sorry they, they didn't. So this is a ternary operator, it's question mark. And uh, I don't have an example for ternary operator, but uh, if you know C, you know what I'm talking about. That the relation operations is greater than, less than, equal, equal is identity, and uh, bang equal is a disjunction, not equal, and greater than and less than or equal to. These are relational operators, and the relational operators are good only into a list of numbers or into a collection of numbers, right? So um, you can compare two numbers. Or you can compare two strings, but strings are converted to numbers and then compared. So let's see the table of truths. This is something that doesn't uh, 
belong to dart, but the, the table of truth for dart is this one. So P and Q are two propositions, and the uh, all the possible combinations I have created here, because you have four values, you have two values, you have four combinations. And these are all combination possible for P and Q. And then the operations are deterministic. All the time, not P is true. All the time, because when it's false, it's true. So not false is true. Not true is false. And this is again the same operation. Not false is true and not true is false. This is not. P or Q. But uh, I have to chat sometimes. But uh, you have time to look at my presentation and when I'm chatting and stuff because I don't want to hurry up. Uh, let's uh, go ahead. If you have any questions, then you can post it into the chat. I'm looking at the chat and you can post it on chat. Between operators, between uh, it's an operation between two numbers. But uh, you look at the numbers as um, as binary. And when you look at the number as binary representation, then you do the operation between every bit. Uh, so this is low level, uh, called low level representation of numbers. And the, uh, it's usually done on integers. So the, the between operators works on integers. So the, I, I, I told you about the not. Not is, um, instead of being bang, is tilde. This is uh, known as not in C. But uh, this is not for every bit. Uh, it's supposed to be double tilde for op instead of bank to be consistent because and is only one and the only one bear is or and uh, if you put two then it's logic if you put only one then it's between but uh, bank you don't use one bank here and two banks there you use only one bank there and so C is not consistent in convention for operators. Not consistent. And this is my critic about C, because C is not consistent. <coughs> and it's arbitrary decision to do these operators, because actually one vertical bar is, doesn't make sense to be OR doesn't make sense. So, but does for a C developer. <laughs> and this symbol here is XOR. And I don't know why it's this symbol XOR. It's ar ar absolutely arbitrary selection. Because XOR is a upper row. It's upper row in logic. And uh, this is, doesn't look like an upper row. Maybe it does like a an arrow, but it's stretched. <laughs> so these are some examples here. And this is left shift, the right shift, right? And this is some example. If you don't know these operations, then you contact me on that on uh, Discord, and I can explain more. But also in software engineering class, I'm explaining more about each operation. So it's uh, for computer scientists, it's important to know that power of two can be calculated very f efficient using the shift, the shift operator. If you use uh, left shift operator, uh, one left shift 
x that is a uh, power of 2. So we finished the first section and it took me 32 minutes. It's supposed to keep, take, take me only 20 minutes, so we're gonna go over the uh, time, but uh, it doesn't matter. This presentation is about two hours long. But maybe I'm gonna finish earlier. Let's see, it's five slides. A duration, 10 minutes, maybe more. And uh, we wanna talk about variable, constants, expressions, and keywords. That's a uh, basic elements, right? So the variables in Dart. But uh, first of all, uh, you, uh, I'm repeating because Dart is a strongly typed language, but you can read the rest, right? So please, I'm gonna shut up and you're gonna, because it's a study session. Okay, so let's see the example, right? Var name equal Voyager 1. D you see, this is a string, Voyager 1, and it has a different color because I have used color coding, but this is not part of the language. The color coding is depending on the tool you're using, okay? So there's no convention. It's depending on the style that you're using. I have selected this style. Um, and uh, I have used a little bit of gray for uh, the comment and the rest of the code uh, for keywords I used green and uh, for numbers I used blue. So this is called literal. This is a string literal and uh, Dart is going to know that name is of type string. This is uh, an integer, right? Var year equal 1977. And uh, this is a float value, arbitrary names for the names of the variables are important. So the name of the variable must represent what you want, but it cannot be a reserved keyword. The name of the variable start with a letter and can contain also number and underscore. But when you do a program, you have to name your variables in a suggestive manner. And I think Dart enables you to do very long names for variables. Usually a computer language has 32 characters for, a name, for naming a variable. But sometimes you can use 64 or more. Uh, it's depending on the language. Uninitialized numbers are null. For example, int line count, if you say int line count, that is going to say line count equal equal null. And you can use the operator equal equal to see if it's a null value. Let's see for constants. So the constants use the keyword final or const. Can use type hint. So without type annotation, final name equal Elucian Moisen. This is my name. And uh, you see that it's final because I'm not going to change my name. So if it's in the program, uh, you have a variable name that is final and you cannot change its value. Final string workplace search code laboratory. This is 
my final working place. I'm not going to change my working place, so it's final. Compile time uh, constant p equal 3.14. I don't know. <laughs> there are geeks that don't pipe from top of their head. I'm not proud, but I uh, don't know except 3.14. That's my precision. <laughs> I'm an approximative guy. So void main, print name, print work place, print pi. This is going to print every single variable value. So how you output? You just print, and that's it. It's a function. Print is a function, and that's why you have to put whatever you print in parentheses, like in Python. So it's a function that doesn't return anything. It's just having a side effect, and the side effect is to print out to the console the result. Okay? So this is a valid program in Dart valid program because Dart needs this function main to like uh, any uh, like any C program or Java program it, it, the compiler must know which is the first entry point in the program and the language and Dart allow you to have declarations and then a function main math expressions so mathematics so we we know mathematics like in school but in computer science and mathematics is a little bit different we use different symbols and conventions to do expressions so we talk about expressions in in uh, the language because the expression can be used in different places uh, to make statements and uh, that's why it's important to make a distinction between expressions and statements so we learned first of all the expressions so the expressions I let you read right Okay, so I, I hope you have read. Now, let's see example. Simple expressions. Let's see, one is an expression. One is a constant literal called. And if you use one, it's an expression. Any constant literal is an expression. But now you can combine two expressions using a, an operator. And if you do, then you have a more complex expression for, with two expressions. So that, that's the key. The key is that expressions can be combined together into larger expressions. 3 multiplied by 2 are multiplication. So these are simple expressions. And uh, the computer can execute only one expression at a time. It cannot execute multiple expressions at a time, only if it's very smart. But uh, in parallel computation, when expression can be executed in parallel, the computer can figure out that multiplications have to be done first. So it's doing first all the multiplications, and then it's memorizing all the results, and then it's doing the plus for all the, the sub-results. And this is how, how it can be done in parallel, a way to do it in parallel. The usually evaluation of expressions is just serial, it's just one one core, and uh, it's done one at a time. So it's done uh, one single expression at a time. This is a complex expression. You have two additions. The, so the compiler is going to do first a plus b, then the result is going to be added to c, and then the result. It's going to be divided by 3 because you have used parentheses and this is modifying the order of execution for example here we have several functions which are also expressions so this is a function call and this is another function call in the function call you use parentheses and you can give a list of arguments 
and if you give a list of arguments, the result is going to be added to the another result of another function. And of course, the function must be executed first. So, so the 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 operation is done between two results. Then the two results are uh, are uh, added to each other. And then we have SQRT, which is a function that is extracting the root of these two uh, elements. So it's a complex expression. This is what I can tell you about it. Expression have type. So the result of an expression has a type, uh, which is calculated by the Dart. And if the type do not match the uh, expected type, then uh, it's going to give you an error. Compilation error. Logic expression. <clears throat> so, because expression have a type, there are different type of expressions. So that's why logic expression is expression that return a Boolean value. That's why it's logic expression. Logic expression is using Boolean values and logic operators. So usually, a logical expression is using Boolean operators, but it can also use operation operators, which are also logic operators, right? So can you read, please? So read this. Some logic expression. Yeah. So <clears throat> I hope you read. So logical expression can be sometimes called conditions. So let's see an example. This is a function main, and all the what it does is in, comprised inside uh, uh, squiggly brackets. And this is the block. Uh, and uh, here we have local variables. These are Boolean. Um, as Boolean. And uh, let's see this expression here. Many developers do not understand this expression. I hope you do. So boolean b1 is declaring b1 and then is assigning to b1 the value 1 equal 1. But 1 equal 1 is true. So the b1 is going to become true. And we assume that b1 is true. And the assert statement is executed only in the debug phase, debug phase. So it's for debugging. So the, the, you put asserts here and there when you think that is something that you assume that is right. And it may be wrong. If it's wrong, then the assertion is going to fail and you have to fix it. So if you want to compare two booleans, then you use equal equal. For example, true equal equal b1 is going to be give you a result true. And this is expected. Assert b2 is true. So if this is failing, then I'm stupid, <laughs> but it's not going to fail. Oh, oh, okay. So here is compare B3 with a string. Uh, no, B3 is a comparison between two strings. And if the two strings are different, then B3 is going to be false. But true and true, this and that is different. Because this, this and that are different, then B3 is true. And uh, then print done. Uh, this door just want to print the string done. And uh, sorry that I didn't show the result here. Well, I supposed to show the result, how the result. I'm going to fix it later. So a string is a sequence of code units. And uh, if you know with the code, uh, the strings uh, in Dart are uh, encoded using Unicode with the F16. So in Dart, you can use single code or double code string. And uh, I, there is a lot of details about strings that I'm not uh, 
not presenting, uh, but uh, this is just an introduction, right? So first, for now, you have to know that strings can be double quoted or single quoted strings, and both of them are with the F16. And if, as a demonstration, I have a secret string that is having some weird characters, and these are this I can read this. It's uh, what it says. It says Sage Code Laboratory. Yeah, I can read this script, which is a language that I have invented. It's called Marsh. Concatenation. You can concatenate using plus to concatenate two strings. So in many languages, uh, you know a lot of functions about strings. But one important function is that you can put two strings together into one longer string. And this is called concatenation. And it's a very simple idea that plus can be used for concatenating two strings. Not mathematical, but in computer science, you can have whatever convention you want. In other languages, you use vertical two bars to concatenate two strings. Can you believe it? And in other languages, you use plus. But my opinion is that you're supposed to use and, ampersand and, to concatenate two strings. But I'm stupid. Uh, maybe other people will create this language. Okay, so example, this example here, it's giving you the output. So let's have other lines. First, we declare a variable test that takes value the result of an expression. So first, we convert 10 to string using this weird notation because 10 is an object. Because it's an object, we can it ha can have methods, and it has the method to string. And if we con convert ten to string, then we can concatenate two strings. And if we concatenate two strings, we get this result here: ten ten. It's not twenty. It's ten ten. So we print this one, and this is going to output 10, 10. Then we do another calculation. A test equal this is a test. Test this is another way to concatenate strings in Dart. This is very unusual and characteristic only to Dart. If you put several strings together, Dart is eliminating the enters. Here, there is no enter, and you're going to have this is a test. Uh, they're concatenated. This is how you make a longer string in Dart using concatenation of string literals. But you have to end with semicolon. And that's why Dart has using semicolon. Because Dart cannot know for sure if you have finished the sentence here or you're going to continue. But if there is no semicolon, that means you're going to continue. So there is no need for a continuation character. In Python, you have the other way around. You have a continuation character, but no semicolon at the end. It's a trade-off. You either that or either that. And uh, I like better with semicolon. I swear, I, I do like it better. Some people are annoyed by so many semicolons, but the compiler is more easy to do if you do semicolons at the end. Variable scope. So the scope, the word scope, it it has two meanings. One is an area or an extent, and another one is the purpose. So the word scope in this case is used as the extent of availability of a variable. So where, if you declare a variable, so let, let, let's read.
So I hope you have read it. So let's realize what I have said. Okay. So first of all, uh, the variable scope is an area or a, a, a domain where the scope is uh, active and the, all the variables are declared in a particular scope and valid only in that scope. But scope can be nested. So you can have a local scope and a more local scope. And how is working? So if this example shows you that this scope, uh, that is local, int e equal what is declared in local scope of function main. The function main here starts with a um, bracket. And every single block is a scope. The block is starting with bracket and ending with bracket. And th therefore, I can start the block without a name. So this bracket here, I'm starting another scope, the second scope. And in this local scope, I am declaring another variable which has value zero. And now I print. If I print it, I say I get zero. But then I'm finishing the scope with curly bracket. And then I print again the i. And here you go. The output is going to be one. Because i is this one here. Even if I change it here, this is another i. So this is called shadowing. That's why it's called shadowing example. Because this effect is undesired. You can shadow variables using a local scope. But it's something that sometimes you want, sometimes you don't. But in this case, this is the behavior. So it's good to know about the scope. Now, I'm not going to teach you all the keywords, but when you finish learning Dart, and you have supposed to know all these keywords, and it's about 62 keywords. But uh, Dart is a rich language. It has many keywords. C has only 32. So it's... Uh, Java has 50, so that is, with 60 keywords, is a little bit more verbose. <clears throat> so, we finished, uh, now we have section 3. And uh, section 3 is going to be duration 10 minutes, but I'm a big mouse, so maybe it's going to take uh, you will learn the functions and classes and collections. Let's take a break. I'm gonna chat.
So let's start the section number three. Um, this is programming parroting. So first of all, Dart has functions, and because it has functions, we have to understand what is a function. So uh, this is a diagram that I made, and uh, you can read the description right here. And this is the syntax. So the function, this is the function, it has three important elements. It has parameters, and it has a computation block, and the return. So how it works? The function must be used in a program, and the function can be called. So you call the function, and the function can be called using arguments. The arguments become input and goes into parameters. Then the computation takes place, a return value is calculated, and it's output, and this is called the result. And the result is used, and then a program continues. And this is how it works. A function call is interrupting the current thread it's interrupting the current thread, it's executing in a separate thread, and then it's using the results and the thread continue on. Functions are reusable fragments of code, and usually, usually a function has a name. Functions accept input and produce output. Functions do not have output return void. So, this is output type, the, the output type must be specified, if you don't specify, then you say void. And uh, then the name of the function, this name, you it's a proper name, you have to give it an identifier. It is called identifier, the name is an identifier. And then you say type and the parameter. And you declare the parameter using this notation, type first, type parameter. And then it's a list separated by comma. That's why I use three dots here because you can continue with many parameters. Then you have uh, open the bracket and then you make a statements, statements, and then return expression and then close. This is a function declaration, very uh, logical and uh, is similar to C. Okay, when you return, you return an expression, and the expression can be a variable or it can be um, a uh, mathematical expression or concatenation or something that return a value and the, when you return the value that value becomes the result that's it so simple in all computer languages the same the function return result now let's see about the classes classes are used in object oriented programming and um, you declare a class using the class keyword in Dart. This is nice because in other languages you don't have the class keyword, you have other keywords. For example, in Rust you don't have the keyword class. You declare the class in a different way. So, <clears throat> a class as a concept has a name and the name always starts with capital letter and then you have properties and methods and this is called encapsulation and a, a class encapsulate data and behavior so this is the idea of a class a class is a piece of program that declare a, a, stru a structure and so a class have a structure and the structure is like a table with many fields. And these fields are called properties. And it has methods. And the method is implemented only once. But it can be used in many objects. Classes are used to create objects. So the class encapsulates data and behavior. Class is a name, properties a method. Class... <laughs> Classes, it's a mistake. Class name start with uppercase. Okay, let's see the syntax. Oh, oh sorry. 
let's see the syntax the, so you say class name here this is something that you have to invent to make an invention uh, whatever you want class name animals for example but this is not an example this is syntax okay so i'm using this weird notation of describing the syntax and i'm explaining how it's described first of all this is a comment right and this uh, this is a definition of a field and you use the type name the term, for example integer the type and then you say this dot and this is a keyword this is a keyword that's why you can use dot field one because this is an object and represent the current object that you're gonna create. So that's why field one belongs to the object, not to the class. Okay? So you have a constructor. This is a method that you don't have a return type for this method. But because it's declared inside the class, belongs to the class. And it has exactly the same name as the class. Because it has exactly the same name, this is called constructor. And this is the fun first function called when you create a new object. So this function receives parameters, and inside the function you can access this. Uh, which represent an object and it's an object of this kind of object so you can assign values to the fields that you have declared here field one is declared you I can assign values when you initialize the object and then you can have other functions inside the class these are called methods Okay, so similar to other languages, similar to Java. Now, there are many things that we didn't talk about classes, but uh, this is for introduction, and this is just to point out that Dart has classes. There are many things to discuss about classes, but that's, object, that's the scope of another presentation, not this one. This one is just introductory. Advanced presentation is going to be later, not this. Okay. So let's see, uh, continue with the collection. We already over the time limit, um, one hour. But I'm going to go on until I finish the presentation. Maybe it's going to take half an hour more. So let's see. What is a collection? A collection is a variable that contains many values. So the collection in Dart can be declared using type inference. Type inference, you see. Dart is using JSON for comp composite variable. So JSON is a notation created for JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript object notation. That is what is called JSON, JavaScript object notation. Dart has three predefined collections. List, set, maps. So if you learn list, set, and maps, you can do a lot of stuff using Dart because it's important to use collections in your programming. So this is an example of how you declare the list var numbers equal one to three. Very intuitive, similar to Python. You use square brackets. And because you have done this, looks like a dynamic language. You don't say anything about the type. The type is created automatically by Dart. And then you say var fruits equal squiggly bracket apple orange banana. This is a set. And you know in mathematics, elements in a set are unique. And if you put two oranges here, Orange, orange, it's going to be only one orange in the final result. Map dictionary. So this is another collection which is called map or dictionary. And in this case, word 
uh, I have used a dictionary for Marsh. Ona is phone. Odina is computer. Veka is vehicle. Because Marsh is using a kind of short words for making a fun, fun language, funny language. Pona, phone, ordina, computer, veka, vehicle. But this is an example. I have used here single strings, single quote strings for keys and double quote strings for values. So it's a pair of k value. Key phone, value phone. Key ordina, value computer. Key vehicle and value vehicle. The value is English and the key is Marsh. So I use semicolon here. I use two column. I use column, column, column. Two dots on top of each other is called column. Column and to separate the key and value. And we start with squiggly bracket and with squiggly bracket, but this is not a set. Okay? It's a set of key value pairs. It's similar to a set. So because it's similar to a set, they're using exactly the same uh, par the same squiggly bracket parenthesis because the key must be unique in the in a dictionary. In Fauna can be only once. If I'm using Fauna again, that's not gonna be good. It's gonna be taken only one in consideration. Key must be unique. And the, the dictionary is organized by indexing in order of the keys. So it's fast. It's fast to find an element by using the key. And it's slow if you use the value to search elements. You cannot use the value to search elements. If you do, then you have to do a full scan of the entire collection. So the uh, access by by the key is the fastest way to access an element in a collection. Okay, so now the control flow. Uh, for some reason, I like to present the control flow. It's very uh, relaxing to learn. This can be very fast. And uh, it's going to be 15 minutes long, I hope. Decision, selection, repetition. If you have decision, selection, and repetition in a language, then the language is Turing complete. Yet, if you don't have decision, selection, and repetition, the language is not Turing complete. So the decision statement is the if statement. And the if works like this. It has two branches, the true branch and the false branch. And only one is executed. And how? If the condition is true, we execute first branch. If the condition is false, then we execute the second branch. And we use keyword if else. If else. There are two blocks, okay? One block is here and ending here. Another block starts here after the else and end here. So in the block, you have many statements like any other block. So you create two exclusive blocks. Exclusive means one or the other. That means exclusive blocks. W only one block is executed. Selection is controlled by a condition and condition is enclosed in the round brackets. So the condition is between me and you, a selection statement. You select which branch to execute, but it's a selection statement that is using a condition. So that's why it's a selection statements that uh, it's called decision. Very, very easy to uh, to understand this terminology, right? Important thing is to understand the syntax. The syntax is starting with if condition is enclosed in parentheses, round parentheses. Okay, round parentheses, like in JavaScript. Letter. This is a new slide that I have created recently. So I tested this software uh, on, uh, online and uh, it compiled and it executed. So this software is formatted 
and uh, okay, I'm gonna explain after I explain the diagram. Let's look at the diagram. We start with this starting point, previous statement. Let's, we start with a condition, and then if the condition is true, we execute branch one. If the condition is false, we execute another condition. And uh, if this condition become true, then we execute branch two. Otherwise, we, we evaluate another condition. If this condition is uh, true, we execute a particular branch. And if it's false, we execute the default branch. The default branch is the last branch, and we continue with the next statement. There you go. So if only one condition is true, then that branch is executed, and the others are not. So the branches are cascaded. It's called a ladder. And you do it this way to be fast. This program is going to fast, be fast. Because only one condition is evaluated. And then it's executed the branch and that's it. The rest of the conditions are not evaluated. The first one is true. Second one is not evaluated because first one was true. But if it's not true, then second is executed and is evaluated. And the evaluation of a logical expression sometimes is expensive. It can be a function call can be something that is expensive. So that's why, we, because not all the conditions are executed, only one condition is executed at a time, that's why it's good to use cascade, because you start with the most probable situation. If the most probable situation is not happening, then you start with less probab probable situation. And you execute this way uh, different branches. <coughs> so a letter is a selection statement controlled by many conditions. So this is uh, this is uh, 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 wrong here. <laughs> I, I have to fix it. Let's fix it. So, uh, there's no hello world here. Uh, I, I don't know why I have here. This is what I wanted to say. But I have recorded this. Uh, I don't know why it's, it's so. Okay, fix it. So, it, uh, import... Um, So this is an example. An example, right? Now it's fixed. Okay, so because it was a new slide, I'm sorry, I apologize. But you see, this video is authentic, so I don't, I'm not gonna cut it. Um, Let's analyze what is, what is working. First of all, we import mathematical. Uh, this is a module that we import using this syntax, import dart math. And then void main, and this is the main function. And then you see, I start with the function and I end the function here. Start with the block of the function. And I declare two variables, local variables, var, gen, gen, random. This is an instance of random, and var grade equal x and score equal zero. And Dart, you can declare two variables in the same line, but each variable needs it needs an initialization. For and I have declared two variables of different types in one single line: var grade and score. If the variables are somehow related, then you put them into one single line declaration two or three variables acceptable into one line. Just a way of making a readable because you don't have to duplicate the var keyword all the time. So here, this is an instantiation using random. Random is a, a class. A random is instantiated using a gen. And gen becomes an object. So 
for starting a loop. For we didn't learn yet the loop, but we're gonna learn the loop later. So I'm starting a loop. For integer e equals zero starts from zero and e less than twenty one e plus plus, and then we we create score, and score is a random number from zero to ninety nine 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 from zero to ninety nine, and then I add one to make it from one to one hundred, and I'm generating the score, and the score. Is compared with 90, and if it's greater than 90, then it's called grade is A. In the United States, you get grades. You don't get, a, a, like in Europe, you don't get a number from 5 to 10. You get grades from A to F. A are good grades, B good grades, C not good, D very bad, and F uh unacceptable so if you have score greater than 90 you get a score greater than 80 you get b greater than 70 you get c and greater than 60 you get d but it's greater than 60 but not greater than 70 because we filter out the situations we expect most people get A. If they don't get A, then maybe they get B. If they don't get B, then maybe they get C. If they don't get C, maybe they get D. If they don't get D, then they get automatically an F. If everything filtered out doesn't work, then F. Uh, so print grade, then we have this convention like in Perl, if you use dollar in front of a variable, you can include the variable in a string. So I'm starting with uh, with a single quote. But I say grade equal dollar grade. A grade is a variable, but there is a magic here. The Dart is parsing this string. It's finding a variable grade. It's putting the value inside the string making automatic conversion from number to string. So this is how you print formatted strings. Very intuitive. You just use dollar. That's this is example. This example can be executed online. I'm gonna show you later how. Let's see the loop. Uh, the loop is, um, the loop is a repetitive statement. So you have a block of code that we want to execute many times. It's the same thing. Mm, and why you do this? Because sometimes you have to repeat the calculation several times and you don't want to create a function. I mean, even if you create a function, you can call a function many times in a loop, from a loop. But uh, this is to make a loop. Repetition is very important. So, do, how it's working? You start uh, with a declaration. And then you make a condition. And then, if the condition is true, you repeat the block. Then you execute another statement, which is a post, po a post expression. Then you evaluate the condition again. If the condition is false, then you get out of range and you stop. So the for loop is like C and it's very complicated, but I'm going to explain. It has three parts. So for loop execute the repetitive block is consists of three expressions, three expressions. So now you know what expression is. And now let's see what the expressions are. First is a declaration. Then it's a control condition. Then it's a post condition okay so the post condition is incremented so the initial value for e equals zero is going to declare a, a, a variable i and the variable i is going to be valid inside the block there is a block here right and this is the repetitive block 
but the variable i is going to be available only inside the block. So we have the i and the i less than max limit. This is the uh, stop condition, the condition for going on or stopping. If the condition is true, then we go on, we repeat. If the condition is false, then we stop. And this is the post. And the post is executed right at the end, here, uh, where? Here, before the closing bracket. The post uh, is in the increment. Okay? This is just the syntax, it's not an example. Okay? The example is here. This is the example. Maybe I should switch. Let's switch. The letter. The letter must come after the loop. So this is an example for also for the loop. So the letter is using a for loop. This is the initialization. This is the condition, and this is the uh, post. Okay, initialization, condition, and and post. Because we have initialization, control condition, and post. So the control condition is I less than 21 so it's going to do 21 score scores so it's going to start with y0 it's going to do 21 fictive scores and then it's going to stop when it's finishing 21 this is an alternative number i would have put here 100 and that's going to be 100 uh, evaluations. So it, this is another statement which is called interruption statement and in the uh, interruption statement can be used in the in the for loop. And so the this block of code is executed uninterrupted if there are no interruptions. But in this case we have two interruptions. One is using the continue, one is using the break. So this is a uh, this is controlled by three conditions. One condition is here, another condition is here, that I just say condition, logic expression, of course, and another condition is here. So this repetition is controlled by three conditions. So the continue keyword shortcut repetitive block and the break stop repetitive block. So the continue what it does? First of all, it's incrementing. It's using this expression to do the post. The continue is doing the post. So the post takes place, then the condition is evaluating, and if the condition is true, then it's repeated again until here. If the condition become true, then it pass and it's going to continue with second block. And if the condition if there is a condition for breaking, then it's breaking and it's stopping. The break point is executed only once and it's stopped. Then this is also uh, a skip. It's a shortcut. So that's why continue and break are called shortcuts. While loop. The while loop is similar to the for loop, but it's controlled by a simple condition. doesn't have those three parts doesn't have increment that doesn't have initialization it has only condition and how it works well this is more like manual work you do a declare variable manually then you check the value and then you execute the block 
And then you increment the control variable by manual expression, the manual expression. Maybe I should fix it here. Okay, so uh, that didn't do much. So declare a control variable. You make a declaration here. Then you start while. And you can see this is an outer scope. So the, this declaration is outer scope. But it's going to be visible inside. Because the inner scope allow you to see variables declared in outer scope. They're nested. And when they're nested, the variables are uh, visible in the inner block. So it's repeating as long as the condition is true. But if the condition is false, it's not even starting. It's just stopping here. It's like an if. Do while. Do while is a while upside down. First you do something and then you check the condition. That's why do while is executed, the block, repetitive block is executed at least once. All the time, guaranteed, once execution. But second execution, you don't know. It's, you have to check the condition. If the condition is true, then a second repetition, second iteration. Repetitions are called iterations. Second iteration take place. And then you have many iterations until the condition becomes false. If the condition becomes false, then you stop the iteration. That's it. So, repetitive board is executed only once. Next iteration is enabled by a condition. So, selection statement. Now is the real selection statement. It's also called jump. Uh, so, the jump, selection jump statement. So this jump is forward only. So you remember, maybe you know, there was a language called basic. In the basic, you can use go to statement. And go to statement can go forward or backward. But, but um, that was bad. And uh, we try to do only forward. We can keep some blocks of code, but we cannot get, go back, except if you use a loop. That's the idea of structured programming, and it's more advanced idea. So you cannot go back. Um, but if you use a loop, then you can go back. So the switch statement, uh, do not go back, go only forward. So how it works? You declare a variable, then that variable you just say switch v, and you include the variable in parentheses, and then you say a, a block, and in the block you have many cases, and each case is analyzing one value. So case one v is like v equal one, and then column, and then you start a block, and this is the first case, and then you have to use keyword break to stop the execution. If the case one is executed, a case two, two doesn't have to be analyzed. If the case one is not executed, then maybe case two. If the case two not executed, maybe case three. If the case three is not executed, maybe case four. And 
if that not true many cases then there is a default keyword that you can use and that's any other case that is not one of these this is how it works if you don't use the break then two cases are executed so now the error handling error handling We we got in trouble now. <laughs> we have an error and we have to deal with it. So So error handlers. Uh, here is uh, a diagram that I have made, and uh, we start. Then we make a try. This is a try block, and inside the try block we execute. Uh, and uh, if there is an exception, then we interrupt, and uh, we catch the exception, and uh, different exception. And if we catch the exception, then after that we execute the final block finally block and then we end if there is no exception then the final block is executed anyway and then we end so catch has two parameters e and stock trace e is an error and c is the stock trace finally block is optional so this is a syntax pattern we start with keyword try we make a block which is a protected block against errors if any error exists then we catch it and we uh, analyze that part uh, separate in another block so how we catch it we use on on as a keyword then we we uh, this uh, particular exception we catch so th this is a a name of every exception can have a name so we catch the exception and we, we catch it and we take the object exception and we can have access to e inside this block then this is what we catch exception number two and then we capture it in the e and and if there is no situation that we think about it there is another situation then we catch the situation and we also catch the stack trace the stack trace is uh, all the function calls uh, in the stack so you know maybe you know maybe you don't, you don't. Uh, when you have many functions then you show the entry point which function was called from which function and what line number and that's giving you the opportunity to report the line number and display all the stack trace what happened before what happened before so you can look up in the stack up to the the first point where it starts the call so it's if you have many function calls every function call is stored on the stack and you have many line numbers to analyze that's maybe helpful sometimes but if you finished with catching then you can retro the exception and if you retro the exception that is propagated so what it means is you you analyze what you could analyze and then if you if you analyze enough then you say oh uh, hands off i give up now uh, re retrow the exception or you can decide not to retrow the exception just swallow it after you analyze it and you report it into a log maybe the exception is not so important and you swallow it you you make the program quiet so not interruption but handled so in, in, in some cases you handle the exception and you don't re stop the program all the time when it's an exception it's called error tolerant 
if it's error tolerant maybe you try again maybe you uh, display a message to the user user can decide okay and uh, go on but just maybe it's a warning maybe you just log a warning or something interesting and then after everything is done you want to guarantee that another part of program is executed even if there is an error you just say finally and finally it's going to be executed even if you retro before the exception is propagated the final block must is executed guaranteed so this is how you deal with exception it's nice it's similar to java but uh, this system is not available for example in go or some languages do not have uh, exceptions and do not have try it's a try block nice i, I like try block there are performance issues with many exceptions if you have a try block in the language um, go wanted to be faster so they decided not to use exception handlers Now, now uh, this uh, section is not finished, but uh, I have uh, started using, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dart and uh, started to understand better. So, so let's see what I have done. First of all, how to run the Dart. So, if you want to run Dart, you can run it uh, online. Uh, but you can download the Dart SDK, Software Development Kit, and you can install it on your computer, and then you're going to be able to run Dart. But you can try several examples online before you install. And uh, you can create uh, uh, Dart programs uh, using repl.it.com. You can create pro pro Dart uh, applications and you can run them online and you can create quick test using Dart Pad Dev, a website. So if you install also an IDE, you need both SDK and IDE to do professional development using Dart. And uh, I, I not installed yet Dart. First time studying a language, then I decide if I want to install it or not. So uh, right now I'm studying Dart and this is my first presentation, my first understanding of Dart. And I shared from my experience of other languages compared to Dart. But I'm about to become a Dart developer. So uh, when I do, then I'm going to add more slides. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use GitHub to store Dart pro public gists. Just is a small program that you can do and share. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make example in Gist. And I'm going to share them. Here is my first example. And you can uh, execute this example online. And uh, this is to use math library. And uh, I have used this example to show several cases and here is a switch statement a loop statement and the declaration this is what they demonstrate <coughs> and if you scan this code you can execute it on your mobile phone but if you click this if you click this then let's see what i'm saying here Dart is a modular language, and because it's a modular language, it can use libraries. This is a, a library, Dart, column, math. So you have to use keyword import. You use import and the name of the library, and then you can use functions from the library. One of the uh, things that is declared in the, this uh, library is the random. The random is an object a class that you can instantiate using keyword new and this is a thing the keyword new is deprecated so if you use it Dart is going to tell you don't use it but i've used it here because this is an old example that i made before i was sick 
of COVID. So I will ask here. So this is an old example, but it's now available for everyone. So this is my first um, gist that is public. So let's click to see how it's happening. Now we have navigated to Dartpad. Dartpad, open the gist. You can open a gist in Dartpad. So if, after you make the gist, this is the gist ID. If you know a gist ID, if somebody is giving you the gist ID, then you just make this uh, URL. You make this URL by hacking it. So you copy this part here, and then you add the gist ID, and that's it. And then, if you have this link, you can see whatever gist you want for, from everybody on the internet, even if it's secret. A gist can be secret or public. If it's public, then somebody can see the gist on your profile. If it's secret, doesn't see it on your profile, but you can share a link to it. If you share it, then it's visible. So you can modify my program if you want to. And I don't, don't mind, it's yours to modify. But it's not going to be stored on my gist. The modification is going to be yours. And when you exit, they're going to be lost. So you have to do your own gist if you want to make a copy of it. So here is executed automatically. You see, so it's executed. And how many times? 21 times. So let's execute it only one time to see what's happening. If I say less than one, it's going to be executed two times, uh, one time. So it was executed only one time. Var one. First case. So it's gonna give me a, a number between one and five. Let's see, um, let's, let's make it from one to 10. And then let's make 20 cases. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have 20 cases. First case, value was two, is random, right? Value is two, and uh, it was ca uh, uh, catch by case two. It was catch here. So th there was print, this print was executed, and that's why it says second. You see second case, because otherwise you're gonna have first case. And then if if I'm looking again, this is a second case. Second case executed two times. Then V6, default case. If the value is six, V was here, uh, number six. If number six, then we go up to hit default. You see? Also number two again, then number seven. It's also the default case because it's greater than five. Number four is between three and five. So because it's number four, because it's number four, let's see. Because the number is four, case three is not three. Case four is four. If it's four, there is no print here. But it's okay because four falls through, there is no break. If I'm not using break here, then nothing happened. If three, four, three is ignored, four is ignored, and five is catched. But this is also catched when three or four. So for three or four, then it's between three and five. So between three and five, for example, value four is between three and five. Value five is also between three and five. Okay. And there is no value 3, but if I execute again, it's changed. Okay, so let's see if there is a 3. Now, for some reason, there is no 3. Let's make another one. Let's in the case 3. Case 3 is also between 3 and four, 5. You see, the case 3 is here. Case 3, no print, but it's falling through, and this is executed. That's why it says 
3 between 3 and 5. This is how switch works. Okay, so I finished. This is how you execute Dart. I show you how to execute Dart. And from now on, you can take over and learn the rest by yourself. Dart language, you know, you just say Dart dot uh, dev. This is the home page for Dart. And the, this is how I learning Dart by looking at the home page. Dart. And uh, Dart has uh, overview. And the Dart has documentation. And uh, here in the documentation, I'm looking inside the documentation and I'm making notes. And uh, I have a website, time sharing. And you can scan this link here to join us. Ask questions and engage, start your own project. So, now you know that. Congratulations, thank you for watching.